Partnership Tax General Concepts Problem 5. This year, Herb Partnership generated $780,000 ordinary business income. Herb has two equal partners, Savory LLC and Sweet Corp and S Corporation. Savory LLC has three members, Mr. Parsley, an individual who owns a 45% interest, Mrs. Rosemary, an individual who owns a 30% interest, and Sage Inc., a C corporation which owns a 25% interest. Sweet Corp has 100 shares of outstanding stock, all of which are owned by Mrs. Mint, an individual. Identify the taxpayers who must pay tax on the partnership income and determine how much income must be reported by each. This is a pretty easy, straightforward problem. It's all just about understanding the structure in terms of an entity owning another entity and then going through and answering, okay, what portion does each get using the percentages? So it's really just focusing on the percentages, the facts of the problem and whatnot. Before we even jump into the numbers and answer the question, identify the taxpayers who must pay tax on the partnership income, determine how much income must be reported. Let's just talk about the entity structure. So just start off by reading the problem. We've got herb partnership, herb partnership. Okay. So we have herb, herb partnership. Now in the tax world, we have different symbols to suggest different types of entities. An entity tax is a partnership is a triangle. So we're going to make herb a triangle, okay? Because it's herb partnership. So we have an herb partnership, the triangle. And herb is owned by two equal partners as it suggests. It's owned by Savory LLC and Sweet Corp and S Corporation, okay? So Savory LLC with LLCs, LLCs are taxed as partnerships as well, unless you're specified otherwise. Okay. They're either taxed as single member LLCs. I'm sorry. They're either taxed as a disregard entity. If they're a single member LLC, or if they have multiple members, they're taxed like a partnership. Now, Savory LLC here, we're told has three members. So that means it can't be a disregarded entity, um, which disregarded entity just means it flows through on your uh, schedule C of your 1040. Like if you have a sole proprietorship type activity. So Savory LLC is one of the owners. So we'll go ahead and put that down. Okay. Again, triangle for partnership. And then the other owner of herb is a S corporation and corporations, C corporations have a rectangle. S corporations kind of have a, uh, a weird shape, kind of like a mix. Okay. And this is, um, sweet corp. So sweet corp. Now I'm leaving off the partnership LLC and uh, corporation titles just for um, simplicity on our, our chart here. What, what the symbol looks like for an S corporation is like this. It kind of starts off like a rectangle and then it kind of turns into a triangle because um, S corporations have one level of tax. C corporations have twice or double taxation. Okay. So that's what this looks like. Of herb is owned by a partnership and sweet. Okay. Now savory LLC is owned by three members. Um, Members are the owners of an LLC, by the way. Mr. Parsley is an individual. Individuals are don denoted by circles. So we're going to put a circle, okay? And for this one, I'm just going to put a P for Mr. Parsley. I'll just put P for Parsley. And then the next one is Rosemary, okay? And Rosemary is also an individual. So we have an R for Rosemary. And then finally, the last one is we have Sage Inc., which is a C corporation, which C corporations, let me, um, let me redraw that, that circle. That was not good for the rosemary. Let's do that a little bit better, make it clearer for you. Boom, like that. Okay. So the last one is uh, Sage Inc. So that's going to be an S for our last owner of Savory. So S for Sage Inc. And again, for a, a C corporation, which is what Sage Inc. is, it's going to be a rectangle like that. Okay. And those are the owners of, um, of Savory LLC. Sweet Corp has a hundred shares. Okay. Sweet Corp has a hundred shares and it's owned all by Mrs. Mint an individual, all by Mrs. Mint individual. So that one we just draw down and we're going to just going to put, um, an M for an individual mint and again, it's a circle because, uh, individuals are denoted, denoted by circles. So let me just draw this out really fast for you as like a kind of like a diagram because I do these in other videos. So triangle means it's taxed as a tax partnership. Okay. Tax partnership. If it's a, um, like kind of a mix between a rectangular item and a, uh, rectangle on the, I'm sorry, and a triangle on the bottom, that is a S corporation S corporation because it has elements of both the corporate 
and the partnership, okay? And then if it's a rectangle, pure rectangle like we have for S, for um, Sage Inc., that is a C corporation. And then finally, individuals are going to be a circle. Individuals. Now, I said finally individuals, but that's finally for our chart. Another thing is that if you have a disregarded entity, like I mentioned, a single member LLC, a disregarded entity basically is a triangle with a circle in the middle. And the idea is that it's similar to the tax treatment of a partnership, but it flows through to the individual return. That is a disregarded entity. So an example of a disregarded entity is a sole proprietorship where you don't actually have to file a specific return for the the business, you file an individual return. Um, and also a single member LLC is another example of that. So disregarded entity is that symbol. And those are the main symbols in tax that we use, um, especially in this class, because these are the ones that we focus on in this class, okay? So the ownership. So Herb is owned uh, by Savory and Sweet, and we're told it has two equal partners. So Savory owns 50% of Herb, and Sweet owns 50% of Herb. Now, we also told later on that Miss Mint, an individual, owns all of Sweet. So that's 100% there. 100% there. Okay, so Savory owns 50% of Herb. And then we have P for Parsley, Mr. Parsley, R for Mrs. Rosemary, and then S for Sage, Inc. We're told that Mr. Parsley owns 45%. So let's go ahead and put 45% for Parsley. Rosemary owns 30% of Savory. And then Sage Inc. owns 25% of Savory. So that's really everything. So Herb, again, is owned 50% by Savory, 50% by Sweet. And then Sweet is owned 100% by Miss Mint, Miss, I'm sorry, Mrs. Mint, which is an individual. Savory is owned 45% by Mr. Parsley, 30% by Mrs. Rosemary and 25% by um, Sage Inc. Now, of course, if you add all these up, it should equal 100, right? 50 plus 50 is 100 for Herb. And then we have 100% Mrs. Mint. That's right. And then 45 plus 30 plus 25 is 100. So we're good. Okay, we're not done with the question. This is the most important thing, though, is just drawing this out, okay? Because the question's asking, identify the taxpayers who must pay tax on the partnership income, referring specifically to the partnership income of HERB. Because we're told that HERB has $780,000 of ordinary business income during the year. $780,000 of ordinary business income. So all we have to do here, we just need to write out all the people that are potentially have to pay tax on this respective $780,000 of ordinary business income. Now, when it comes to partnership tax returns, so ERB partnerships tax return, the form 1065, partnership does not actually pay tax on this. It flows through to the owners. If it, it flows through in what's called the schedule K1. Okay. So we're going to report the amount of ordinary business income that each partner on through the K1 has to report on their return. And that's what the question is asking. Determine how much income must be reported by each. So we're looking at everybody below ERP. So not just savory and sweet, because the idea is that savory and sweet are both owned by even other owners. We have to ultimately see, at the end of the day, where is it going to stop? At what person's return? Because yes, we have $780,000 and savory and sweet each are going to report half of that amount. That's correct on their return, but ultimately it's going to go down to these owners. So the question is ultimately asking for these, these, this last level. The question, and I know it's a little confusing, identify that the taxpayer must pay tax because you're like, well, savory and sweet, don't they have to just split 780,000? It goes on their returns. Yes, you're correct. But Savory is a partnership, right? Because it's a triangle. Sweet is an S corporation. And just like with Herb, Savory, the partnership, or Savory, the LLC tax is a partnership, does not have to pay tax on that amount. And Sweet as an S corporation does not have to pay tax on that amount either. So there's no tax paid on either. There's no tax here. There's no tax here. There's no tax here. The individuals below, Mr. Parsley, Mrs. Rosemary, the C corporation, and Mrs. Um, mint, they have to pay tax on their return. And a C corporation does pay tax on its return, which is different from the S corporation, the partnership, where it, it just flows through to the next owner. So see what we're doing? We're literally going down and we're saying the last row, 
okay? The last row, these four people. These four people are ultimately, or these four taxpayers, I shouldn't say people because we have individuals and we have an S corporation. These four individuals, let me remove that circle there. These four taxpayers ultimately pay the tax on the $780,000 of ordinary business income, okay? So I'm just gonna basically write out their names. I'm just gonna write out their names. So we've got Mr. Parsley. We've got Mrs. Rosemary. Mrs. Rosemary. We've got Sage Inc., which again is a C corporation, as we're told, and C corporations do pay tax. S corporations do not pay tax on their actual return because it flows through. Same with partnership, it flows through to the next owners. And then finally, we've got Mrs. Mint. So the question's asking, who must pay tax on partnership income? It's these four, these four taxpayers are the ones that pay tax ultimately on that $780,000 of ordinary business income because again, the ones built above are just flow through entities. They're just flow throughs. And then you have to determine the amount of income each reports through the K-1 process, okay? And the way we do this is we take $780,000 and we split that between the two entities. So that's gonna be Savory ultimately reports $390,000 and Sweet ultimately reports $390,000. Now, Savory is also a entity taxed as a partnership because again, it's a triangle. So Savory files a form 1065. Sweet is an S corporation as we're told in the problem and therefore Sweet files with an 1120S. Both of those returns, because those entities, what they, the type of entity they are, they don't pay tax on that amount. It just flows through to the next person again through the K-1. Both, both types of returns have a K-1 which just means that you report to the individual owners. So now what you're, gonna, what you're gonna do is the ultimate taxpayers are responsible for paying tax on these amounts. We're gonna then calculate. So we're gonna take Savory's portion first. So we take 390,000, we multiply it by the percentages, 45%, 30%, and 25% respectively. So that means Mr. Parsley is gonna be 390,000, $390,000, right? Savory's portion of the $780,000. So 390,000, times 45%, and that number is gonna be $175,500 for Mr. Parsley. We do the same type of calculation for Mrs. Rosemary. 30% of $390,000 is $117,000. And then finally, we do Sage Inc. tax as a C corporation. We take 390,000 times 25%, and that's gonna equal $97,500. Now, if you pause the video and you add up these three numbers, it will equal $390,000. Now we do Mrs. Mint. Mrs. Mint owns 100% of Sweet, Sweet Corp, which is an S corporation, so it all flows through on the K-1 to Mrs. Mint, so that's gonna be all $390,000 goes on Mrs. Mint. If we add up all these numbers together, if you add up all these numbers, it's gonna equal $780,000, okay? And that's how you can check your work to make sure it equals 780, matches 780, and we are done with this problem.